Good afternoon from Croke Park. I'm here at the Asian Gaelic Games launch and it is, has been a very insightful morning actually. Um, it's been great meeting a couple of the players around here in Croke Park and um, meeting a range of people from the Asian County Board who are over in Ireland. Um, I actually had the pleasure of going to the match with them yesterday here in Croke Park and it's bizarre. It's so quiet here in, in the background but it certainly wasn't quiet earlier on this morning when Ruth McCarthy from Fexco, Liam Horn, the President of the GAA, Joe Toulon, Chair of uh, the Asian County Board and Bernard Brogan and several others uh, we're speaking this morning. The reason that I'm here and that I'm interested in this is I believe that the GAA in Asia sits right at the centre of four megatrends that are going on right now. And I just wanted to share those with you. The first one is undoubtedly the economic angle. The IMF say that two thirds of the world's economic growth this year is in Asia and that it remains to be the region with most considerable potential um, and the most dynamic economy by a considerable margin. So, and I've shared this in, in other videos before, obviously the, the economy in Asia is growing and growing very significantly. Now, obviously Asia is a very big region and you need to, to distinguish where and particularly what your strategy is going to be if you're going to build that. Um, but the GAA out there is actually all over. It is all over the region, right across the continent, um, from Tokyo down to Hong Kong, uh, in Beijing, Shanghai, uh, and so on and so on and so on. I, I really could go on. And specifically in that economic angle as well, um, I was at the Roots to Growth conference in the Aviva here in Ireland in April, and uh, a statistic was quoted there that 60% of the world's middle class by 2025 will also be in Asia. So it, it, it presents a huge economic opportunity. Uh, the second one is actually the government's plan. And the government in their Ireland's Global Footprint 2025 plan um, is showing a huge increase in the amount of Asian activity. So they're going to build a flagship Ireland house in Tokyo, for example, and they're going to widen and deepen the impact of Enterprise Ireland in China. Uh, and they're going to be opening a consulate in uh, Mumbai, in, in India, and a whole lot more besides. So the government are really keen to, to build the Asian presence there as well. The third thing relates to Europe, actually, because in Europe, it's, it's, it's interesting watching what's going on between EU and Asian relations. So first of all, um, the EU and Singapore signed the first bilateral deal uh, of, of the EU with an, uh, with an ASEAN country. So that was signed and currently, um, some of you may have heard about the economic partnership agreement with Tokyo, as well, with Japan, that the EU is currently working on. That is the biggest bilateral trade deal that will ever have uh, been completed by the EU so far. In addition, Enterprise Europe Network, um, it's the biggest business network in the world. Any of you that have watched a video of mine before, you will have constantly heard me speak about this organization that helped us export from the very beginning. Um, they too have got quite a significant presence now uh, across Asia. They're in uh, Japan, they're in China, and, and so many other parts of, um, of Asia. And you might say, hold on now, Susan, you said Enterprise Europe network and that's the thing is that it began as the biggest network in Europe and now it's expanding outwards so so that's also another another trend is that Europe is investing eastwards and the fourth thing and I think this is very interesting particularly when I think of let's say my savvy teens or when I think of the people that uh, that I speak to on a daily basis about the opportunities of how they might progress in their career is for example Fexco here uh, and they're the, the headline sponsor of the Asian Gaelic Games they have 2,700 people across the world and I met a number of those people uh, when I was at the All China Games in Shanghai a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks ago First derivatives are also uh, in Asia and more and more companies are going to be there. I got an email this morning from Currency Fair, for example, um, saying that they too are expanding into Asia. So more and more of our companies, our local Irish companies, or for those of you who view this video from other countries, you too will have companies that will be based in uh, parts of Asia. The thing is, though, is that in order to attract young people, and in fact, not just young people, but any people, to come and work in those companies, you're going to need a great offering for them. But they will need to feel a sense of home, they will need to establish a sense of community there, etc. So how does all of this feed then right back in here uh, into the launch of the Asian Games this morning? Well, I'll tell you why. Is that I think that um, it's really interesting as I watch all of these futuristic developments about the economy and about the, the, uh, the government's plan and um, all of the other aspects that I mentioned, the GA has been there all along. 
Uh, the very first Asian Gaelic Games was there in 1996. Uh, so now th this morning was the launch of the 23rd Asian Games. Uh, Fexco has been a sponsor for eight. I heard Ruth McCarthy just mention that in the room next door. Um, they've been a sponsor of the Asian Gaelic Games for the, for the last eight years and, and continue to be, uh, as well as the, the range of other sponsors that you can see, see right down here behind me. And a range of GA players, many that you will know very well, uh, are travelling out this year and have travelled out in previous years as well. So the thing is, is that the connectivity, the connectivity and the inclusion into Asian society, the GA has been there already. And then I was also talking to a couple of people here this morning um, who are from the ladies football and from Komogi and from in general, all of what the GA represents from a female point of view. And the statistics of GA Asia is that it's 55 male and 45 women um, on a, on a, out of 100 people. So it's also very interesting to see that they're there in terms of the, the, the inclusivity broadly. I mean, those metrics are, are healthy. Um, they're there in terms of the, the cultural aspect. Um, and, and I often wonder, is that are other aspects of, of us as a nation looking east? Are we there? So the diplomacy is getting there. It's, it's starting to, you know, there, there's a wide expansion there. Um, if I went to London right now, I'd have, or New York, or New Canada, I'd have my pick of networks, business networks to start from. But if I was to go to Asia, there, is, there may be one. There may be, there's the Singapore Chamber of Commerce, Thai Chamber of Commerce, um, Hong Kong Chamber of Commerce, of which I'm a member, etc. But there certainly isn't at all the amount of development that there has been in other areas. And sure, how could there be, since there hasn't been as many of us out there? And that is where, as I say, the GAA has been there already. So as, as I'm looking, uh, and I've been observing over the past couple of months about the connectivity that Ireland has with Asia, and particularly from a business point of view and from looking eastwards, as I mentioned, for our savvy teens, as talking to them over the last couple of weeks, etc., it actually leads me back here, here being <laughs> right behind me. It actually le leads me back to this, and that is that the GAA has been there right at the centre. And I think it's a it's a... It's, an, a very, it's a fascinating organisation to, to look at and, and to be part of. I, I went to the All China Games in Shanghai and I met with so many people, who, some who had been there for a long time. Some people went out to Korea, for example, out for the World Cup in 2002 and st are still there. I met some people who were just after moving to Hong Kong. I met a range of people who had spent 20 years in, all over China. Uh, and then I met some people who had moved out three weeks ago. And the point is, is that... The GA there is more about a social network to include people with a common interest in sport and in Irishness and having the crack uh, and so on like that. And uh, it was fascinating because they're a networking group within themselves. They offer immense connectivity into all facets of public and private sector organisations and not-for-profits and communities and societies and all sorts. So I would have to say, um, I really do think that the GA is a fantastic landing pad for the Irish in Asia. So, in summary, uh, the four mega trends that I see GA Asia sitting right at the centre of is, is the economic angle, is the government angle, um, is the European angle, and then also the fact that more and more companies are going to be looking east and they will want to recruit people, maybe to go out or maybe to work for them. And, and all the while, uh, the GA Asia presents the connectivity, the understanding, the local cultural understanding, the Guangxi, you could say, if, if I was in China, that would be the word that I would be using, um, as well as a, a par creating part of a lifestyle for people out there. The last thing I will say on this is that Certainly the GA is not exclusively for Irish people. I met a range of people in China who were playing for them um, and they're currently now training non-Irish referees for their own sustainability. So if it is the case that you're out there, um, the, the games, by the way, the Asian Gaelic Games are happening in Bangkok in November, but there's also regional uh, games like what I had mentioned that I had attended and so on. But check it out. Do check it out. Uh, if you're living there, it's certainly worthwhile checking it out. I, from personal experience, it's a very connected but connective and inclusive group. Uh, and on that note, I really did learn an awful lot. And definitely sport, business, they're all interacting, as I say, right in the centre of those four megatrends. So from Croke Park this very, very sunny day, thank you very much indeed for inviting me along to be here this morning. And I certainly learned a lot.